ePod Studios. Now, now it's time, it's for, time for Solak and Bertrand. Brought to you by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks, on the Sports Hub. Touch myself. Touch that is definitely not what this is. This isn't it? No. This is Aerosmith. Oh. Oh, back in the saddle. Yeah. yeah. It is Zolak and Bertrand presented by BetMGM, the king of sports books. Ryan Johnston in for Beetle here on this Finish Strong Friday. Presented by 128 Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electric, the company that finishes every job strong. Ryan wants to shout out his entire team at 128, from customer service to the technicians in every division for helping keep all of their customers with lights, heat, and electricity during the extreme winter weather this season. Mm -hmm. Thanks for always answering every call, working hard, and finishing every job strong. Happy Finish Strong Friday. My man, Dominic. Yeah. One of the workers over there. There you go. Good job. Great job. Put in my. They've they've done a lot of work in my have house. They? they have. You know they what's had, amazing? They, to me? they they installed my. We had central air put in about five years ago, yeah. and they had one twenty eight out to do that. Good. Yeah. Would you get a blower? Forced, yeah. forced air. Yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. Oof. Yeah. It's it is it changed my life. The day that they put it in, it was like a hundred and ten degrees, and my wife had gone to work. I'm home. They're you know, they had to figure out something, or it wasn't going to work. Like they were. It's like we get. I'm not sure we're going to be able to do this today. I said, if my wife comes home, we don't have central air when she arrives and it's 110 degrees, I'm getting a divorce. They figured it out. <laughs> they figured it out, did a great job. It works It works as as exactly like we would have hoped. I can't believe they don't have solder joints where, you know, you, at the corners of, um, you know, where the pipes connect. No solder. They don't solder their joints. They decrimp it. It's a new technique. Nice. Yeah. Nice stuff. So. What? The Red Sox. Finally did something worth talking about did this offseason today. They did. I saw the name. I got excited. Then I read it. Then I got less excited. Well, therein lies the whole thing. Like, what exactly is Theo Epstein going to be doing for the Fenway Sports Group? Because if you missed the announcement today, he is back. He is joining the Fenway Sports Group. A uh, An official statement put out by management today that says that uh, he is going to be a senior advisor, three-time World Series champion baseball executive, joining the ownership group. Dwight Schrute. He has been appointed to the role of senior advisor to the company, which which owns the Red Sox, Liverpool, Penguins, RFK Racing, Boston Common Golf. In this position, it says, Epstein will advise Fenway Sports Group owners John Henry, Tom Werner, Mike Gordon, and Sam Kennedy on the company's sporting operations across the portfolio and consult on strategic growth and investment mm-hmm. initiatives. That sounds like, as I said earlier, the Isaiah Thomas, it's, Theo has no responsibilities here whatsoever. It's too broad. Kind of yeah, it's too broad, yeah. and it would be more baseball-specific if you gave him an actual baseball term. I don't care what the term is. Make one up. Hey, we brought him back to help reignite what we've been missing here. To everything that Sam Kennedy has stood, stood there and called you liars to see, think that they weren't all in, or the whole full throttle thing. Theo would say, maybe don't say full throttle. Right. Or you know what you guys should do? Turn on your radios. Listen to how the baseball <laughs> team is not talked about or how they're talking about you. Fire your social media team. What else would you say, Milliken? More stuff, right? Spend money. But beyond spend money. I mean, that's that's the number one thing. But Yeah, it's all those things. That's exactly Understand what you are. Understand your fan base. You forgot don't call them where liars. you're from. Right. Don't, don't call your fan base liars when the people who are at your event for winter weekend are the people who care more than anyone. They're paying for a $100 pass to go to Springfield to they listen to you guys talk. for the full tank of gas to go to Springfield to pay to get in to sit there and see what you put on stage. Pay attention when your most loyal fans are booing you when you take the stage. That That's, yeah. that's a pretty good, pretty good yeah. message to take away from that. Uh, John Henry in this press release today. With his strategic mind, leadership, and unwavering passion for sports, though. Sports, not baseball. Sports. Theo brings invaluable assets that will drive us forward across our it. diverse enterprises, especially in our sporting operations across 
Hockey. I don't care. EPL football care. and baseball. Baseball this is comes where, third. The, the behind Rollers the soccer up team again. and the Penguins. He can't get out of his own effing way. You they see Theo Epstein. What do you think of? Baseball. Is, you think of baseball. Is Theo going to play goal for the Penguins next year? This is insulting. This is insulting to him. Theo, huge Penguins guy. <laughs> Hey, how's he big with the, soccer guy? Apparently, too. Is he an F one guy? Does he like seeing the cars turn left? Huh? Do they go fast? Is he into golf? Does he know about the Saudis? Does he does he know about golf? Does he know about live and the PGA tour? Huh? I, think, I don't think so. I think there were two paths, right? When he left the Cubs a few years back, it was: is he going to be the commissioner one day, or does he want to be an owner for a sports team? That kind of route. Well, we saw this summer, well, Rob Manfred got the extension. He's going to be. Yep. The commissioner of baseball through 2029. So this is his way to start getting into ownership. Obviously, he doesn't have the money to buy a full team. This it, is this is the why I'm excited about this. It's not because I think Theo is going to come in and turn around the Red Sox uh, and and help Craig Breslow because this press release does not indicate that he has anything to do with the daily operations or helping to find players or anything like that. Well, he's the only one to give the, the recommendation on Breslow, right? Yes, and, yeah. Breslow Boom is well. Breslow is his yeah. is one of his guys. He hired him out in Chicago, and he was a big part of him getting the job here. There's no question about that. What excites me about this is that this may be the light at the end of the tunnel that John Henry's ownership is coming to an end, that this starts the process here, that Theo comes in as a minority owner, right? He kind of gets that on his resume, and that he and Sam Kennedy, now, they don't have the money to buy the Red Sox. You would have to have, you know, mega billions to even consider buying buying the Fenway Sports Group. But you could have the mentality to have a front. But could they do what Jeter did down in Miami where – you're the front person right. with a Point some hand. heavy, heavy-handed investors behind you. Yep. Absolutely, and I think we're probably a few years away from Theo Epstein being the the leader of the ownership group and Henry and Werner hitting the road. Yeah, your baseball team's at a critical juncture right now. There's massive problems, and the last thing you want to hear when you reintroduce Theo Epstein's name back into the, the to the Boston market is talk about your other sports that you're invested in. I don't want to hear about Liverpool. I don't want to hear about the hockey team. I don't want to hear about F1. I don't want to hear about Ralph's racing. I don't want to hear about any of that. I don't want to hear about LeBron. I don't want to hear about this guy saved your ass. This guy helped you break an 86-year-old curse. This guy went and broke it and won one with us with the Chicago Cubs, W flags everywhere. You hired you, you hired a baseball executive yes. and your your press release is all about you mentioned your, your other your portfolio portfolio your diverse enterprises across your sporting operations and you put hockey first now i'm a hockey guy i know i wouldn't i wouldn't think to put hockey first on the list of of fenway sports group properties did you have a more tone deaf owner seriously no he's helped you win they've won four titles i get it but given the kickback and the lack of approach to this offseason with this baseball team and pulling back on ticket prices and a full throttle joke. And then your president calling people liars. You roll out your portfolio in front of everybody at this press release. Tone deaf. The timing of it, too. It's right after Corbin Burns gets traded to the Thank Orioles you. last yeah. night. One oh, of the good for them. What did we just talk to? about the Orioles that, yesterday? That exactly <laughs> Two billionaires are going <laughs> to yep. take over. Screw you. We're going to get a frontline starter. Baltimore's going to win more. Didn't even think twice about it. I no, think the he only doesn't hope care. he doesn't know. Yeah, the only hope in RJ, I think Theo one day becoming owner would be awesome. Yeah. There's been a very big issue since Dave Dombrowski left, and when Chris Sale got that contract extension, John Henry and that crew were all against it. They were not interested in it. It was Dave Dombrowski who held him to the fire. Obviously, it cost him his job less than twelve months later. Since then, you've had Heim Bloom, who never hired another advisor, someone that could help him push John Henry and force him to make moves. You have another guy in Craig Breslow, who's a first-year guy, who also doesn't have that kind of credibility. He doesn't have a Hall of Fame resume to say, this is why you need to do this. Hopefully, Theo, being a senior advisor here, can maybe be someone that gets in his ear just a little bit. Say, hey, Jordan Montgomery's in your state. His wife's working here. Scott Boris is crying through the media because the Rangers have a TV deal that fell through and they can't get their money right. Why don't you pay him? It's just money. See, if, if those I, two young guys can't do it, maybe Theo can be a voice there. Yeah, but I don't know how big of a – like, is he going to be involved in, in Red Sox operations at all? I mean, they're talking about other things, and he's even his quote in the press release, 
is about this giving him an opportunity to uh you know to get involved in other things outside of baseball you know he talks about the special connection he has with the organization and the ownership group that he's had throughout the years um but he says in this role i will not be the one making decisions i will be the one asking questions Offering opinions, building trust, and supporting the terrific people of FSG, not of the Red Sox, but FSG. Oh, God, he's even talking FSG. <laughs> yes, and he's, this is truly a unique opportunity for me, a yeah, chance to partner with people who different. mean a lot to me, a chance so it's to, like Tom Brady stuff, doing a chance to with challenge F1 myself in soccer. new arenas, a chance to challenge myself in new arenas, to use my experience and perspective to help others succeed and win at the highest level. I don't think, listen... If they were bringing him in as a baseball executive, this is a home run, right? Everybody yes. can get behind this, yes. but they're bringing him in as a Fenway Sports Group From executive, tone, and those are two very different verbiage, things. This is Tom Brady, Tony Robbins, <laughs> expand our horizons, uh, branch out, become better people, learn to live with the, uh, the, Oh, God. Sell me down to rent. Oh. I think just being a sounding board, as he did mention in there, though, just being someone, it's a chance. I'm not saying I think it's going to happen, but to have a Hail Mary when you have Sam Kennedy, who has no problem delivering these messages, and we know how tight Sam and Theo are. They are as close as friends could possibly get. Is there a mole in there now that can kind of change the language, change the word, and just add a little fire? I think Theo is there to spend the next two or three years building up his consortium that will ultimately buy out Henry's group. But if that's the case, and he can do that from inside and that will help him with the connections that he needs to put the money together. But if that's the case where he's building up towards becoming an owner, then the Red Sox should be front of mind when he's having these conversations just about the portfolio, because if that's where his eyes are set, well, that's what you're hoping to build towards and have it in a good spot. Yeah, but the better the team is, the more expensive it's going to get. It ain't changing either way. It's going to be expensive (laughs) no matter what. It's Boston Red Sox. They win another another World Series. You can just add another billion onto it. It's like he's got, you know, there's a there's a limit to what he's He's going to be able to find ain't his money it's going to be who's investing <laughs> he's going to be licking gelato with henry and pizzuti oh god <laughs> uh it, milliken just mentioned it corbin burns trade last night yep. inside the division here we will talk a little bit about that another one that <laughs> perhaps you would have liked to have seen the red Sox be in on this guy you know he's only an, an ace at 29 years old who uh might might have been able to come in to an organization that drastically needs an arm he's going to baltimore to pitch in inner harbor yeah so we'll get to that coming up ryan johnston in for mark bertrand today here on zolak and bertrand 98.5 the sports so and beetle are back with more on the sports hub when I heard about the trade, my first thought was, well, Baltimore's the pick now. Baltimore's the team yeah. uh, that everyone's going to probably have to go through at some point uh, to get to the World Series or win the World Series. They just uh, have, have legitimized that whole organization with this one trade. And if you look at their top three there, Corbin Burns goes with Kyle Bradish and, of course, the young Grayson Rodriguez. Bradish now with that ERA under three last year, they'll have two pitchers on the Orioles, and I read this from Sarah Langs last night, who have an ERA under three, first time since 1976, Garland and Palmer. So that's going to be a great uh, rotation. It allows everyone else to move down a slot. Um, the relief pitchers signing Kimbrell, of course, they're, they're the pick for me now. Wow. Baseball players are names that I actually heard of. <laughs> I'm serious. Felger did this the other day, too. Name their starting lineup here. You can name five or four. They're the most un- unrecognizable team in town. Ryan Johnston in for Beetle today. Wow. Zolak and Bertrand. Good for Some you, Baltimore. Some of the discussion about the trade that happened last night. Orioles get Corbin Burns, the Brewers ace. In exchange for an actual ace <laughs> prospect, Joey Ortiz. Oh, they gave up a pos- prospect. How dare they? Number 63 prospect in MLB pipeline. Number six prospect from the Orioles organization. And uh, they also get left-handed pitcher D.L. Hall, who was a, uh, a 2024 competitive balance round A draft pick. So that's what they gave yeah. up. It's amazing. To get a top-of-the-line guy. 
you know, kind of like your organization yeah. might might want it someday. Do you even have five starting pitchers? It's <laughs> a comical. Thing. Well, do you do. Roster? I'm not sure they're five major oh, league starting break. pitchers, but you break. do have five five guys who can start. I'm happy for Milliken because he's going to see good baseball this spring. He's going to see other good teams to where you can write your articles and listicles and like, boy, how the Orioles finally figured out or. Wow, look at them. What a signing by uh, Toronto to go get Turner, the missing piece for them, to put them back into the hunt in the AL East. It's painful, and Corbin oh. Burns was someone I wrote about a few months ago. Like, if you're the Boston Red Sox and you're so full throttle, right, this package they gave up here. And the Joey Ortiz stuff, you know, there's different rankings. Baseball America doesn't even have him in their top 100. But they do have D.L. Hall at 93. And then the competitive balance pick, that is worth something. But this is a package you could match without giving up the big three. If you want to hold on to Meyer, Teal, and Anthony, that's what it is. You can make this deal. But trade. what's the big difference here? It's Corbin Burns after this season. He's a Scott Boris client. He's going to get paid. We're talking a mega extension or mega deal, and he wants to go to free agency. Well, okay, the Orioles before that, right, they didn't want to spend money. Not they had the second lowest payroll. Yep. You bring the new owners in. They don't care if they're going to try to work out an extension now or after the season. You're going to come to Baltimore, a team that won 100 games, and you're our missing piece. We're going to pair you with Grayson Rodriguez, and we are going to go off. This is our chance to take over the AL East and be a powerhouse. The reason the Red Sox don't want to do this deal, because you're going to have to pay him that mega extension a year from now. That's not something they're interested in. They'd rather kick the pay can down the road. Now. They wouldn't pay Turner $13 million. Yeah, that's oh, what, what it is. What do you mean big pitching? Well, which, by the way, going back to the conversation we were just having about a potential change of ownership, that's part of what you do when you're getting ready for an ownership change is you avoid those long-term big-money contracts because the new owner doesn't necessarily want to keep those on the books. So is this a spot where Theo would go to them, hey, guys, this is not good. So <laughs> you want me to advise you? I'm advising you. That guy should not be going to Baltimore. And you should have your alert up that two billionaires bought that team and things are going to be different now. They ain't the old Orioles. Wow, we're on, we're not the old Red Sox, are we? I mean, I have to look at racing. I have to look at golf. Oh, they have an indoor golf thing, too. League. Yes. How about that? Yeah. They oh, got yeah. delayed by a TGL year. So that's gonna yeah. that's a you know, that's gotta be burning a hole in their pocket right now. Like, be like, cut, not gonna be bringing be in any money from that for a while. Ribbons at that. Cut and ribbon ceremony for that one. That would no? be fun. Three bill three billion to get into the golf game. Disgusting. Three billion. When you can't, you know, you can't get, you can't find a starter, right? You mentioned Montgomery, like they, they're still out there, right? Montgomery and Snell are still out there, so are they just slow playing the market yeah, with, still you know, with potential Boston, top of the, the rotation hospital, guy? Yeah. It's yeah. like we'll just, you know, we'll just take our time and hopefully nobody signs him and maybe we can get him for cheap. Is that the is that the plan? If that's what they're holding out for, good luck to you. Because every year as we get closer to spring training, Scott Boris knows what he's doing. He knows a couple guys are going to blow their elbow out the first week. Oh, another team will step in. It'll be a Dave Dombrowski that's desperate. That knows, hey, we're trying to win, and they'll make that move. There's too much focus on the future and not enough on the present. But it's okay, because they're going to sit here and tell you, oh, well, you know, we're not good enough right now. Tom Warner, you told me at winter weekend that the Red Sox were 10 wins better. You talk to someone in the front office, that would make them an 88 or 89 win team. So if you think they're that good, why wouldn't you invest them, invest in them? Instead, you're going to treat them like a 60 win team when they were right in the wild card race up until what a week away from September last year. But that's what they're doing. They're fine. Kicking the can down the road. There's no interest or urgency. I saw a McCarthy post last night. The over under is uh, 80 and a half wins. So that's where they're at right now. Like, can you can they get to five hundred? That is that that's the question that the sports books are asking right now. Can the Red Sox even get to five hundred? Meanwhile, I'm having terrible flashbacks from last year when it looked like I had the over nailed on seventy eight and a half, and they went into the tank in the last month of the season. I think they won five games out of their yeah. last thirty three or whatever it was. Uh, by the way, this is how it. Tyler's buddy on the podcast, Jared Carabas, last night posted a photograph from Costco where apparently right now you can get Red Sox tickets and hats, a combination package nice. for 130 bucks. Ta-da! Red Sox are down so bad right now that you can buy tickets at Costco, was Jared Carabas' tweet last night. Uh, and there it is, a package of two tickets and Red Sox caps for 130 bucks. I'd rather buy 50 hot dogs <laughs> for the two double two bucks. You know, to get the hell, the hell of a hot dog there. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, world too. world famous hot dogs. Yeah, those are the ones that the owner said they can never they can never change those. Can't right? Can't change the price. Yeah. Yep. Can't change the price. Same with the chicken. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 
That's where that's where this organization is. That they're literally selling at a discount price club. You can buy tickets and hats. Pathetic. Imagine. See, I wonder. I wonder how it got to that point. Gee, I wonder how we how we fell so far. Maybe it has something to do with the, I don't know, the the lack of interest from the ownership, the lack of interest in spending money for real quality players, the idea that we're going to build like we are a bargain basement budget team instead of okay. using the the full might of the Fenway Sports Group dollar. Tone deaf again. Tone deaf. Timing. Everything. Like, is nobody advising you on these decisions and when your releases are? Baltimore just completed a signing a day after the two billionaires bought the team for the Angeles family that's owned it for 31 years that really didn't spend. And that team won 100 games. And they said, boy, Tyler just said it three days ago. If they get real yep. pitching, good God. There they are. And the day after you release, hey, we're bringing Theo Epstein back to be an advisory role for hockey, golf, Right. The announcement should have been baseball. Sam Kennedy is running the business operation. Theo Epstein is running the baseball operation. John Henry and Tom Warner are going to run the Penguins and the racing team and the golf league and all of that other stuff. And we are stepping back and we are letting these two guys run the baseball. We appreciate Sam's ever have has done for organization, but at this point, uh, in Sam's career now we feel it's best for him with everything we've taken our place to help us in other areas. And it's great to have back Theo Epstein to help run the yes. baseball. And in team. addition to that, we'll we'll consult Theo and Sam on some of our other businesses, but their primary focus is going to be the Boston Red Sox. Like John Henry famously said about Larry Lucchino, Larry Lucchino runs the Red Sox. Top to bottom. That's what you need. And give them a real budget to work with and then turn Theo loose on the baseball operations side and say, you and Craig Breslow win us a World Series. Yay! It's picturing <laughs> picturing Theo in uh, level nine up in Pittsburgh, pumping his fist like Cam Neely. <laughs> Wonder if he has a good relationship with Sidney Crosby. Throwing the water bottle up against things the have wall. been kind of rocky the last couple of years in Pittsburgh. You know, well, wonder if he can go in and smooth some of that out. Ta-da. How's Malkin doing these days? <laughs> Tim McCone gives a sports hub headline: Celtics Lakers wasn't exactly what we were hoping for last night in a lot of different ways. We'll talk a little bit about that next. Ryan Johnston in for Beetle today on Zolak. This is the show that keeps Boston sports fans working. Yeah, I'm a sexual freak. Zolak and Bertrand. That's stuff we do on the sports hub. And they will dribble it into the front court in the hands of Skyler Mays and the Laker fans who stayed. Who thought they were in for a long night without LeBron and Anthony Davis end up seeing a signature win for their team on the road. The clock will hit triple zeros and the Los Angeles Lakers without LeBron James and without Anthony Davis stun the team atop the NBA and their rivals on their home floor. The final score, L.A. 114, Boston 105. Sounds of a clunker last night at the TD Garden. Ryan Johnston in for Mark Bertrand today. Zolak and Bertrand. Did you watch? Yes. It was I, I I was I will say this. For especially the first half, I was just kind of vaguely watching because I was also watching some of the Pro Bowl games last night. Yeah. Which uh actually was more in, in more interesting than I expected. Yeah, they, they, they were watching the all star game draft. <laughs> I skipped out on that one. Although I was interested in Michael Bublé. I do like Michael Bublé. <laughs> well, Michael Bublé might have been on Shroom. He was on Shrooms last night. He, oh, he was on Shrooms? <laughs> yes. What, what, what happened? So they had celebrity captains for the NHL All-Star Game. Yeah. So they, you know, they, they were doing the captain's draft last night. Oh, that's nice. And, uh, you know, they're in an arena full of people. And yeah. Michael Bublé was one of these celebrity captains. And so he's part of the festivities. And he's hanging out, having a good time with the, with the players. Do you have the you have the clip of this T Bone? See, so afterwards, they um, they were having a little press conference, yeah. and so he and one of the other celebrity captains, Will Arnett, were talking to the press, and Michael Blue Buble uh, revealed that uh, prior to the event, he had done uh, a microdose of shrooms that turned out not what? to be a microdose. What? 
He said this? Yes. <laughs> At a, in, front of the, in front of the assembled NHL media corps. Was he wigging out? Uh, it sounded like he may have been a little bit during the course of the event. He wasn't at that point. He seemed to have uh, kind of calmed down, but he was having a good time. He was, uh, yeah, he was high on mushrooms. One of my former teammates in mushrooms, we went to, um, <laughs> we went to Clark's down at Faneuil Hall. Couldn't find him. Ended up finding him. He was standing in the corner with his leather jacket wrapped, with his leather jacket wrapped up over his head, standing in the corner like for <laughs> two hours. I'm like, we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. Um, wow. And he talked? Yeah. Shut he was up. doing a press conference. It's like, hey, you know, celebrity captain, let's put him and Will Arnett out there. Will thinking? Arnett, it felt like kind of tried to s- salvage the situation because well, good he just for him. pivoted yeah. away. It's like, ah, let me take it over here for a minute. Let me pivot yeah, away. This guy's this got problems. I mean, uh, wow. That's bad. Really bad. Yeah, when you're high on mushrooms, you maybe don't. Realize that you probably shouldn't reveal that to the press. Say that, or yeah, maybe but... it was one of those situations where he felt like everybody already must know. Right. Because if you've ever been in that Everyone's situation, watching me. like you just, you know, you feel like everybody knows that you're high. So maybe that, maybe that was it. He's like, I better explain this case in case I've done anything Jesus. stupid. Good for him. Wow. Yeah. So the fun, the fun and excitement has started in Toronto. Ha. Yeah. So uh, skills competition tonight. My buddy texted, "Hey, you want to go to a game?" Last night, I was like, "No." I was down in Rhode Island throwing my kid, and he's like, ah, "I said we're all geeked up. Um, get to see LeBron no. and the Lakers and Anthony Davis and him." And then I'm driving back from that, and I hear Jim Murray on one of the sports up headlines. You're never going to believe it. LeBron and Anthony Davis out. So I just and those awful uniforms that the Lakers have now. Like I'm no, I'm done. Not not watching it last night. Freaking load management. You know what? Though? I know they tweaked one tweaked the ankle. The other one's got an issue with the with the Achilles. I don't buy but that crap. This is load management crap. Yeah, no. I don't buy they, that crap. They look at, at this as scheduled loss. We're going into Boston. They don't lose at home. Yep. We're rallying as a team. Uh, scheduled loss. Let's rest our two big guys. So I didn't give it. The, I didn't give it the time of day. So this is you know this is a national TV game last night, which is when they don't want you teams put it on to. Nesson. Well, here's here's the problem. Well, I don't don't think they were going to put it on Ness. I know. Uh, but this here, is this is this is the this is the NBA's pr- problem. There are clearly too many games on the schedule now, right? That that all of these teams have moved to load management with their superstars. Mm-hmm. The Lakers had three out of four, right? They played on Monday, Tuesday, and then again yesterday. They rest the guys in the third game of that four game yep. or four day stretch. Of course, it was going to happen. Of course, it, now selfishly would have wished maybe you rest those guys on Monday or Tuesday. And then you come in here because after all it's Celtics Lakers, it's one of the premier rivalries in the sport. So perhaps you would like to, you know, come in here and put forth your best effort on national TV, but instead, no, we're going to rest those guys. This is the NBA's problem. They have to figure this out because how many people you turned down the tickets last night? I, didn't, oh, I, I couldn't go anyway, but I turned down the but, opportunity to watch. But, but how many people I went to that game LeBron, specifically because LeBron and Anthony Davis coming in here? This is the one time a year that we get to see them in this building. That's if Lakers you Celtics, for the ticket. and you, you, I guarantee people put up premium dollars to get that ticket on the secondary market last night, discounted. and then find out at four o'clock yesterday afternoon that neither one of those guys is playing. Not one of them is sitting. Neither one of them is playing. That's terrible. Terrible. And then, of course, the Celtics come out and suck, which doesn't help matters. Kind of sets. But that's them, too, though. Play to the, play to, play to the level of the competition. If that, it's a big game and it's got juice, Celtics be ready to go. That's the frustrating thing, and that's why oh, they, they came don't out, they came out flat. You know, it's going to be an easy one for right. us. Yeah. You saw in the playoffs last year, DeJounte Murray gets suspended. Oh, it's going to be an easy win against the Hawks. To what Bird they said. They lose. Yeah. To what Bird said. You're human. You, you can't ever estimate the human element of it when you talk analytics or – this or that, or what happened 10 years ago? Who was the quarterback? What's the moment look like? All right, it was a flat night now all of a sudden because they didn't want to play. Right, there's no juice behind it. You no find juice. out LeBron, LeBron and Anthony Davis aren't playing, all right, whatever. Yeah. And the, play, the players feel that way. Man, why like the same coach, way why that, our coach take, take care of us that way? The, the same way that fans felt when they got that news yesterday, the players reacted yeah. exactly the same way. That's what you saw on the court last night is you went, oh, really? This, this, is, this game doesn't have the same – doesn't have the same level of excitement, and the players looked it. They were sleepwalking through that game last night. They got it, booed, right? I think they got booed a little bit. Yeah, because I think Joe Joe addressed the boos in the post game a little bit. Yeah. You know, and rightfully so. Listen, that's going to happen. People pissed with a high paying dollar ticket, man. Yeah, well, Ooh. yeah, 
Because, you, listen, you're going to have those games, right? Nobody, of no team's going to play 82 good games a year, so you're going to suck some nights. And the fact that it happened against the Lakers, okay, great. You know, that that kind of sucks for fans because we have that Celtics-Lakers rivalry yeah, that we think of. LA. Yeah. But when it happens against an undermanned team and you let Austin Reeves go off against you last night, seven three-pointers, 32 points, in a in a when he's got nothing really around him, that's not, that's not acceptable at any time. Terrible. You just got to figure it out because again, you'd think that coming off of last year's postseason and playing flat when there's no Embiid in Game One, playing flat when there's no Dejounte Murray, that you would learn from that. They didn't this year. They they they, they didn't last night at least. You know, playing without those two superstars, you should have throttled the Lakers in the first half. Instead, you're down 14, and we're lucky to be down 14 at the half to begin with. It was a zero performance from the from the Celtics. You think Joe airs them out after something like that? No, no, no. no See, that's the problem. No, like that's I that's think part you can, of though. An 82 yeah, that, game season. I would, I would, I would appreciate a player doing it more. Jalen Brown, come in, like light the room up, because I think that would carry more than Joe lighting them up. I mean, Joe doesn't seem like that kind of. He doesn't seem like that kind of guy. He's got to be does that, and I think I don't think you can do that a whole lot in the NBA. You can't be a hard ass for eighty two games. No, no, but you can. Yeah, and I'm not saying he should be a hard ass for eighty two games, but that one out of eighty two where you absolutely didn't show up against competition that you should have blown their doors off last night without their two best players. You know what you could do? I think that's. I think that's worthy of a little bit of an ass chewing. Pull your starters. Embarrass them. Yes. I would have loved to see that. Don't say anything. Stand there with your arms crossed. Well, Jalen. Come out of the game. Jalen didn't finish that game nope. last night, nope. right? Eight points last night. <laughs> Eight points out of Jalen Brown. All-star, though. The night he was named an all-star. Oof. Cares more about the all-star naming, and that's what it is with that league. Like, that's a massive recognition. You get starting five on that all-star team. That's a big thing. And to hear him talk about it this week, and like, shh. Yeah, but Lakers are in, and they don't have their two guys, but I'll, I'll just score eight tonight. Yeah. Hey, when's All-Star weekend? Is that coming up? Where are we, where are we getting at? A couple of weeks. February. Yeah, yeah, a couple of weeks, That'll right? fun. Yeah. Yeah, they like they can't wait for that. Yeah. Well, they that's need the, that break. They need that. Their, yeah. You know, it's the big party weekend, recruiting yeah. trip. Oh. You know, go hang out with that's your friends. That's where the off-season try to put Try to put together, you know, who's going to move to which team next let's, year. Let's go get the next Kyrie, yeah. Get the new super team together. Yeah. That's fun. Mm. That's where the real, the, the real action happens. Guys recruiting each other in the hallway during the All Star game. Yeah, NBA's got a problem with this. They need to fix that. Whether whether it's the I'm the telling you, game, something it's it's bad. You know, it's realistically, and it look we all know it'll never happen. But realistically, they ought to be considering trimming the the season down to sixty sixty five games. No team should play more than three games a week because clearly the players can't handle that. You can't. You I mean, you're not going to eliminate games though because of the TV rights. Of course, right. So they're they're doing everything they can right now. They have the the, the rules in place. New this year, you have to play 65 games to be eligible for MVP. That should incentivize some guys to play moving forward. Well, you got in the end season, season tournament, tournament is so much fun. They're trying to yeah, dress that stuff up neat. right now, but I don't know what else <laughs> you can fun. do as a league other than that. Put in those minimums. And what stuff. was your favorite moment of the in season tournament though? When you think back on it now, months later, is um, it, when you what was it uh, tier C? Was it tier C they won? <laughs> So, so did they, 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 they put a did they put a banner Lakers, up? Lakers won. Lakers yes. won, and they put the banner yeah. up. Yeah. Did they yeah. put it for the? Yes. No, no yeah. not for the, not the Lakers. Did they? Did the a finalist did, banner? No, the yeah, Lakers did. No, for winning the tier. Oh. Do you get a banner oh. for that? No, Celtics were selling shirts. Like, <laughs> six shirts. You know? <laughs> That's what, those are fun. I just liked everybody slipping on the courts. They all had painted up different colors. That yeah, weird. that was good too. I didn't like anything about it. Well, get used to it. Yeah. It's here now. Mm-hmm. Hey. Um, just wanted to make mention, we are being fed very well today. For, we are. For yes. Uh, Dumpling Daughter. She's been in before. Not that she's a she, but Dumpling Daughter, the restaurant, has been in before. But they have a massive food drop here This today. is one of my favorite. My favorite foods is dumplings. I love them. These are some of the best I've ever had in my life. And I'm now, not even joking. Now, these aren't your round dumplings. They're shaped more like a pierogi. Yeah, it's like, it's a, like, like a, a half moon. moon. Yeah, half moon. Some dumplings come round and are twisted. In Paris, okay. and you steam them, but these are steamed dumplings. Uh, they're more like a pot sticker. Yes, and they are phenomenal. Yes, we've got we've got steamed buns out there mm-hmm. with pork in them. We got some spring rolls. We've got some. Uh, we got two kinds of dumplings. We got chicken and pork. Uh, but they uh, dumpling daughter is here because next weekend, Saturday, I think it is February tenth, yeah. is Chinese New Year, day before the Super Bowl. Yes, so a dumpling daughter brought us lunch to celebrate the year of the dragon. 
And so some of the some of what they brought us today is supposed to bring us luck in the new year. You know, it's funny, McCone didn't know that I knew how to use chopsticks. I was impressed by that. Do you know how to use chopsticks? I do. I do. I prefer I, five? I prefer the fork, but yeah. I saw you using the, yeah, chopsticks. the chopsticks. You were very good at it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. That's showing off a little bit, man. There I are could, forks ca- out I there. I could catch a fly with one. Really? Yeah. So check out Dumpling Daughter. They've got a thing going called the Symbolic Dinner for Four, where you can celebrate the Chinese New Year with a special menu. Uh, you can uh, order online at dumplingdaughter.com. Authentic Chinese flavor crafted with legacy. Taste the traditions, though. But thank you very much to Dumpling Daughter. That was outstanding. Thank you, guys. Appreciate today. it. Outstanding. Thank you. thank you. All right. We will continue here on a Finish Strong Friday. Ryan Johnston in for Beetle on Zolak and Burt. Now. Look at all the suits. Zolak and Burt fan <laughs> on 98.5 The Sports Hub. Zolak and Bertrand, Ryan Johnston in for Beetle today, along with Zoe. With Tim McCone on our headlines as well. 617-779-0985. Let's get to some of your calls. Some of you have been holding for Let's a go. while. Let's go to uh, Mike and Webster up first. Hey, Mike. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Good. Love, hey, your, uh, love your lake. You just made a comment that, that uh, professional basketball players can't play three games a week. Um, that's Hockey, I don't know how hockey players do it. It's going to be the most physical sport, even probably even more so than football, with the hits that they take against the boards. But that's not really the main reason why I'm calling. So here's a question for you. Are you surprised that good old Belichick didn't sign any of the uh, players that had good years uh, before the end of the year? Is, is that kind of the thing that they should do, or do they wait till they go to the freaking free agency and then um, maybe put an offer on the table? Well, I think with the uncertainty of where things were heading, you couldn't sign anybody. You know, and he said, why would you let one who get to this point? Well, there's really nothing you could do here. You don't want um, Bill making those decisions right before you shove him out the door. I think they would cut it off if he wanted to do it. So, yeah, I mean, now's the time, though. But you've got serious cash to spend. You, you've you got you've got a lot of cap room. If you love these players, sign them. Tag them. Yeah, I'd, I'd take Hunter Henry if you love him. Because the tight end a number's not crazy. It's not a crazy number. But you do have guys in-house, and a, and a is one of them, that you want to keep here and you should be willing to pay. You have all of this money to spend. It doesn't necessarily have to be on outside free agents. There are guys here that can help you going forward. And it helps your locker room culture. If you're concerned about culture moving forward, like you are in the season ticket holder um, memo that was sent out yesterday. Yeah. You sign guys that, that, that prove that prove that they can play here, that prove that they're good guys, that they're good leaders. I think Duggar's a great leader on the defense. I think Gawenu's a leader on the offensive line. Hunter Henry keeps being brought up as, you know, Gerard Mayo, offensive leaders, David Andrews, Hunter Henry. That's who that's who the only ones he talked about in his press conference. Now you're gonna want to be yeah. smart about it, but it's something we talked about with Bert Breer earlier today about the culture under Belichick was always no matter how well you perform here it's going to be like pulling teeth to get your contract. And you probably are going to have to go someplace else to do it. That's a culture that needs to change because guys will pick up on that. Even if, even if it's outside free agents who are looking to sign here, they're going, all right, so they're going to bring me in for one or two years. Then they're going to be looking to dump me as opposed to giving me, you know, what I, what, what my value is. Right. You know, or when you draft a guy, you want him to know that if you play well, we're going to give you the contract that you deserve at the end of your rookie deal. And for a lot of years, it hasn't been that way. And that needs to change over the long term. Let's go to John and Winthrop up next here with Zolak and Bertrand. Hey, John. John. Hey, how's it going? I'm wondering why we ain't talking about Bo Nix in the third pick. Because he's not a third pick. Did you hear how bad a week he had? They're talking about him being a second rounder now. Yeah, I don't really. I wouldn't put him in the top five going into senior bowl week. Uh, Supposedly, he was the worst down there. Worst quarterback. Wow. Yeah, Breer was down okay. there. We had we had Burt Breer on earlier. He said he did not have a good week. Inaccurate balls everywhere. See, He's, I think that was Penix looked good. If you're if you think that you know that's an anomaly, I've never been a Knicks guy. Mm-mm. Stiff. How, how about Penix? I like Penix. Yeah, yeah, but but I, he's small, right? He's a little smaller, but I understand the age. It's a lefty. You know, he's 26, so he's been he's he's got the six year plan. Um, he's got the two knee injuries on the same knee, so there's a little red flag there, but. Kid looks like the best pure thrower in a draft. I mean, talk a pure thrower. If if those guys end up, as Bert said, you know, dropping into the second round, where maybe now they're not guys that you would have to potentially trade back into the first round to get, That's but perfect. could take in the second round. 
if you could get Harrison at three and then get your quarterback in the second round, yeah. I mean, that's the home run. Sure. Absolutely. If you believe in one of those guys that, you know, can they be a, a you know, a real NFL starter and you can get them in the second round, that's the, that's. That'd be my the, plan. Yeah. That would, that would be my plan. It's tough to, it's just, it's so going to be so tough if you're sitting there at number three and one of those quarterbacks is going to be available to get, you know, to pass up on it. Cause you're, as we said earlier, you're hoping never to pick in, in this slot I again. Know, I want to know who they're in love with. Because if the one they're not in love with is sitting there at three, I'm not just taking the guy to take it. You did that at 15 three years ago that didn't work out. Would you rather, Zoe, if there's a if there's one of the three that you really love, mm-hmm. would you rather spend the capital to move up and get that guy or do what we were just talking about? I'd sit tight. You stay at three. I stay at three. I'm not, I'm not mortgaging. You, you need picks, man. You... You don't have the luxury like the 49ers did to say, you know, we'll give you our three all next to our three runs because our team's loaded. Your team loaded? No. You you have you have eight 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 roster spots you need to fill offensively. <laughs> eight. <laughs> you have no quarterback. No tight end. Zzz, plural. No number one receiver. No tackles. I mean, dude. It's a lot of receiver, though. I'm not giving up more picks to slab just to get a single player so he could go throw it, block it, and run it and catch it himself no <laughs> well, who's gonna throw it then yeah watch him get his head taken off every play <laughs> and you you people will love it no all right we can continue with more of your calls coming up 617-779-0985 in addition to that uh movement in the broadcast booth this week tom brady greg olson both of them making some comments in different ways this week about their futures with fox we can talk a little bit about that. More of your calls on the way right after McCone gives us sports up headlines. It is Zolak and Bertrand, Ryan Johnston in for Beatle today. Final hour coming up.